ghosts, angels, demons, fairies, vampires, werewolves. All those stories you heard as a kid. All those stories mom and dad said weren't true. For most people, that's all they are. Myth. Legend. Occasionally people find there is something out there in the dark. Many years ago, I trained with the late Lou Gentile, one of the best known demonologists in the United States. When he died, he asked I continue his legacy. I've been continuing investigations since his, since his death, but I also wanted to bring back his efforts to educate the public about what's really out there. Join us for a brand new YouTube series, The Paranormal Encyclopedia, with me, your host, Kevin Mears, demonologist and paranormal investigator, while we investigate what really goes bump in the night. So, before you think this is all about doom and gloom, well, first of all, it is. Second of all, that is not entirely our purpose. We're here to entertain. We're here to, sh to tell you. And you're probably wondering who the hell I am. I'm not the demonologist. It's my job to ask questions. It's my job to be the skeptic. I've got some background in, in history, particularly about witches. But, I'm here to hypothetically be your voice. I'm Drew. Welcome to Paranormal Encyclopedia. everyone, welcome to tonight's edition of the Paranormal Encyclopedia. I am, as always, the one host, Kevin Mears. Um, this is my other host. Drew Rosansky. I, I, I thought I was going to an intro, apparently not. We're going to keep going. Keep going. Intro. <laughs> Kevin, you just forgot me. <laughs> <laughs> they should know by now, you've done a couple of these. And Probably. If you don't know who he is, watch the intro to the show that we just edited in. Yeah, so... We've got with us a wonderful guest. Would you like to to introduce yourself, or would you prefer? Well, you can introduce me, or you can introduce myself. You introduce yourself. yourself. Oh, okay. that's how we usually do this. Hello, my name is Arthur Moyer. Um, I am the founder of Omnomancy, which is a magical tradition that I found about 24 years ago. At this point, there are. Three different groups that are active. One of them is international, with uh, students all over the world: South Korea, Australia, Germany, UK. Um, those are the main ones, I think. And then, of course, a bunch in the United States that aren't quite local. The other groups are actually local to New Jersey. Um, what else would you like to talk about? So, what is Omnimancy? Um, Omnimancy is a it's a technique for magic, meaning not press digitation that pulling wraps out of a hat, but actual you know occult magic, basically occult and those kind of terms. Um, the main difference is most magical systems are based off the culture that they came from. If you think of Egyptian magic or um, even some of the stuff from the Victorian magic, you've ever heard of notion and things of that nature. It's from the culture that they're from. Um, Omnimancy is from the current culture. We all run around with supercomputers in our pockets. You know, things you couldn't even think of back in the 1970s. Um, most magical systems are based around, in the current modern context, or is based around theurgy, which is the concept of asking a entity, whether it be a deity, a spirit, um, or something of that nature, to grant the individual a certain boon, uh, whether to go do something or have something happen, or whether it be healing or do something else, etc. Um, Omnimancy is more based around thaumaturgy, which is using more natural power, either your own, but not relying upon the outside entity to do it for you. Um, we do, while saying that we do energy work is sort of like saying that, you know, um, a person who swings the, uh, you know, I can't come up with a good analogy, actually. Um, it's very underestimating what's actually going on. There's direct energy work when you think of, like, chi working or reiki or things of that nature. Um, and then, of course, you have ceremonial positions, which is would be, you know, Golden Dawn and 
with the OTO and things of that nature, more traditional Wicca, that kind of thing. Um, Amanes is kind of in the middle. It's a matter of, it came from the fact of there's so many different magical traditions, what's the commonality of all of them? And the commonality of all of them was magical energy. And then the concept was, okay, what are they actually doing? Is all the other stuff that they're doing actually necessary? And it turned out it wasn't. So if you can figure out, okay, where's the power actually coming from versus where they think it's coming from because it's convenient, where can you go from there? And so it's dissecting it much like you might dissect a, a program or, you know, your people dissect movies these days to find out, like, different things from trailers and stuff like that. So we did experiments, and we've gotten both positive and negative results from different things that we did, and we built it up from there. So you look at 24 years of experiments from not only that I've done, but the people in the group have done, and so you have sort of like a think tank kind of moving it forward. And we've gotten very impressive results over the years because of that. Okay, so this actually ties into our next topic when we'll just adjust the two of us, but it's an interesting question. I want to get your take on it. How would you define the word magic? Well, you ask 10 magicians, you get 12 answers. That's yeah. actually the reality. Only 12! Yes, only 12. <laughs> yes. Um... I don't be one to quote Crowley. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll take it from this angle. This is kind of how I define it. Let's put in those terms. Being psychic would be being able to see what is going to happen and what's happening magically. Being actually using magic is using what I would refer to as magical energy to have an effect. Be that changing the weather, changing someone's health, finding a job, finding a girlfriend doing something you shouldn't probably be doing. You know, that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, the, the, so some of that would be being psychic would be able to sense things, being magically able to affect things external, whether that be yourself or somebody else. That's very similar to the definition I usually use. Of it. I ask this question particularly because it raises an interesting right when I bring this definition up. What about divination? Divination is getting back to the psychic. True, but there is definitely types of divination yes, that are considered historically lots. magic. Well, they cross over. I mean, all right, if you want to get completely, like, Latin Nazi over things, yes. I mean, on the Mancy, by definition, if you talk about Latin roots, says, you know, divination by all, because Mancy simply means divination mm -hmm. by Latin roots. The problem is that if I say, oh, like, such and such is a necromancer, you don't think he's just divining by the dead. You think he's, you know, this is not what your mother meant by go out and make some friends. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning raising the dead or anything else like that. That's what you think of a necromancer. To drink the car, no. To raise the dead, yes. yes. But the car's okay, yes. the, In modern context, <laughs> modern colloquialism, you understand Nancy as being a form of magic. And so what Omni Nancy means is, it's, by using Omni, says all magic. We go, well, that's kind of strange. But if you know how Omni Nancy works, it's a matter of, it's many different disciplines all at once. And I'll get back to your, your, your question in a minute, but I'm going to define that yeah. quickly. It, it is important. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you think of a, you know, your car or a backhoe or something else like that, there's many different disciplines in that. There's metallurgy, there's hydraulics, there's electronics, there's, you know, other material science, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, these are very different sciences, but they're all combined together to make your car. You know, mm -hmm. if you made your engine out of glass, it would not work very well. It would work for all about five minutes. <laughs> um, and then it would kind of melt down. If you made your windshield out of lead, you would be able to see through it and defeat the purpose of it. You'd be very protected, but that's what makes sense. Yeah. And not even protected by much. It's just yeah, a couple rocks, a Rock, little, yeah. little bit of radiation, but right. a little it's bit pretty radiation. soft. <laughs> but that's the main difference, is the Car way... Most magic these days is done via raw will. I want something done, I'll do the ritual or something else like that, or I'll put my thoughts into an energy ball. To a certain extent, praying is, let's face it, is a form of magic. Plain and simple. That's theurgy. You're praying to a deity, yeah. going, hey, could you do this for me, or could you watch over such and such? That's well, really what that is. I, I, as I've said before, I see magic and prayer is related. <sighs> it's related. People I, like I, I, to like, gonna, find the difference because then they get to like... It's not a clear difference. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to 
chime in on this one other than saying I could chime in on this one because historians debate the shit out of that one. Yeah. Yes, they do, and I'm just and saying that's the, why opinion take what it is. No, be no, for, uh, no, 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 it's a good it. opinion, and it's made me do a lot of thinking and, about, well, where are the lines, particularly because in general magic, you know, prayer is asking someone else to do something. Mm -hmm. Magic is doing it yourself. Like, but theurgy, lawyer, you know, the lines but, but, aren't that but, but most people who do magic, mainstream magic, is doing exactly what yeah, prayer yeah. is. Is you're doing the ritual, you're asking them to do such and such. If you go to a Catholic yeah. uh, church and you light a candle and you do the yeah. whatever, you ask, you know, please, could you do such and such? That's, that, that's a ritual. Yeah. I'm going in. No, I, so, like I said, it's the key difference <laughs> from what I've seen between religion, magic, and science. Science refers to physical attributes of something. Yes. Religion and magic both refer to non-physical aspects of things. The key difference between I'm not speaking as myself, I'm speaking as historians that have no, no, come to a no. semi-consensus on this. Magic refers to that which is practiced by the outsider. Whereas religion is practiced by the masses. A priest compared to a magician, a priest has a massive following that's all respected by the society. Yes. The magician stands on the outside and performs the same role, potentially, as well as can also performing the roles that are taboo to the priest. I would agree with that. I would also add in, at least from Omnimancer's perspective, mm -hmm. we're more towards the more science end of things than... Ritual is sort of like, it's it's green, it's circle, it's triangle, it's whatever. Omnimancy is, we have machines within machines within machines. This is as complicated as your car is. Um, you know, just like your car, the parts are the, the materials they have to be, the, the shape they have to be to do the job they have to do. That's how Omnimancy actually works. That's, that's what we refer to as tech, actually. It's actually why I find Omnimancy so interesting, is there's a very scientific element to how you approach it. And, like and in our case, A plus B will equal C 99% yeah. of the time. Well, to be fair, if you go back to one of the golden ages of magic, when you're looking at the early modern era, which, for our viewers, I've probably already said this, I but I'm strictly referring to around the Renaissance, a little after, you wind up with people having a very blurred line of magic and science as well. Yes. You have yes. alchemy, which yes. was viewed as a science, not as a magic. You have... But by which magic. eventually led to chemistry, yeah. which eventually led to modern medicine. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had astrology, which, which eventually led to astronomy, mm -hmm. which led to, well, rocket science, let's call it. Uh, exactly. Physics, cosmology. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he <laughs> has explained for perfectly well for me that right there. I mean, yeah. way back in the day, if you think of like some shame or whatever, it was like, here, eat this bark. And you, know, you have a headache, eat this bark. Well, in the bark was actually acetylic acid, which yeah. they distilled it down and went, hey, that's aspirin now. We work this, and we, you pay bearer for how much you get the little tablet. You know? And that's the point. So, I mean, a lot of the stuff was based in reality. How the hell do they know to go eat the damn bark? <laughs> you eat enough drugs, you actually figure it out. You but, know. Um, so that would make you die. That would make you see the purple elephants. That would well, make you actually go away. knew that was the shamans. Yeah, to figure indeed. That out. And if anyone is wondering why I studied magic, that that right there. <laughs> thank, thank you. And there's also Clark's third law. Any any sufficiently advanced science technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I do the reverse law. Oh yes. Any, sus any sufficiently advanced magic was in this thing. Science. science. But that's kind of where I'm coming. Which actually, cut, they mentioned in one of my favorite Doctor Who episodes. Yes. That's always fun. So, back to your original thing about divination. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll do tangents if you want. <laughs> we do tangents yeah. all the time. So. Alright, well, I don't even actually finish the original thought, actually. Yeah. Well, it's very quick. The reason why it's called On the Mancy is there are many different magical. Um, just like the, the, the car, where you have different, you know, you have metallurgy, you have electrical science, you have hydro, uh, hydraulics, stuff like that. In Omnimancy, you have many different disciplines as well. They're all combining together to allow a certain effect. Mm -hmm. um, the best way to describe Omnimancy is it's a meta magic, direct magical system. And what that means is it's magic that's built to affect other magic, which means it can do stuff itself, but it often can affect other magical systems. Which means we can trace where power comes from. We can trace where you're trying to. We can go talk to those enemies. Things don't 
all the anonymate is all about efficiency. And we don't have to do a 20 minute ritual to go talk with somebody. We just pop out and go, hey, how you doing? Um, Yo. <laughs> and our most powerful spells don't take, you know, an hour and a half or several days or, you know, all this, you know, we just, you know, we can just kick it out. And it's as powerful. And that's the point, because you learn how things actually work. I mean, you want to have air conditioning and people didn't figure out, like, yeah, how the expanding of molecules and stuff that cools things down and stuff like that. You know, that's kind of how we, we roll with it. We're hoping in 20 years you will see physical evidence of a lot of stuff that we're doing. I mean, something that's irrefutable by science. But that yeah. rich technology doesn't exist yet. We're hoping we get closer. If you look at modern, you know, physics. Quantum I mean, theory. Quantum theory, gravity waves, all this kind yeah. of crazy shit. We're coming in from the opposite side. They're coming in on this side. You know, with the fact that you, you know, the way to detect the gravity waves was that the damn stuff, space stretched and contracted. Think about that. You know, yeah. you, you, that's not normal things that you're used to dealing with. But, you know, um, entanglements, everything from um, uh, what, what, multiple positions, superposition. And they've done that well, on a macro level. Spooky action at a distance. Yeah, well, that's entanglement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so those start to range into magical things. Oh, so yeah. one could easily say that, well, what magicians have been doing is tapping in on that quantum level worth of stuff, which is in all of us, yeah. and everything that's here. And like I said, we're just coming in from the opposite direction. Eventually, they're going to match up, and that's going to be a very funky time when that stuff finally matches up. It should. It, 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 I agree. And it's something because especially when I first started hearing about quantum theory, I'm looking at this and I'm going, so okay, well, you know, half of one thing can affect something else on the other side of the universe. You know, things that were originally part of a whole are still related to each other. It's like, you, you, you guys realize magicians have been saying this for thousands of years. There's actually <laughs> experiments with light now, with prisms and such, that you can actually change the past. Because photons can be considered a particle or a wave. Yep. And they came up with a thought experiment back in the 60s and had the technology to do it. They finally had the technology to actually do it, and they proved that it works. Which means, okay, changing something a few milliseconds ago is not that big of a deal. But here's the problem. Star explodes, you know, 10 billion miles, 10 billion light years away. Gravitational lens goes around the galaxy. There's your prism. They're yeah. saying, why well, little, some little idiots that are going like this and can change something 10 billion years ago. That's, that's what's the scary part, is making people's heads drop out of their heads. <laughs> you know, and you want to annoy atheists and skeptics, talk about this. Yeah. Not necessarily. A lot of atheists are like, yeah, no, it's fine. Just don't have gone into it. Well, yeah, oh, no, I've had a lot of atheists that like try to. Well, and then you get. Oh, no, no, I don't, I don't yeah. say this. From a magical perspective, there are multiple universes. If you go from a purely religious perspective, you have this world in heaven if you go from a Christian perspective. Or the nine realms. Or you get the nine universe. realms, you get that. <laughs> and in my experience, there's a hell of a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. But that's the point. You keep going with this. Yeah. Um, I've seen lots of stuff out there. Part of my magic world lies in the fact that it works that way. And how you can start to play with that, and how that trickles down here, and how that goes back up there. But again, that's a big thing right now in science, where it's not just one or two alternate universe. There's the the brains, the yep. grids, and this just goes up into the mouths of them. It's like that's more accurate for what I'm seeing. And so that's what I mean. I'd love to get a really modern physicist that knows what the hell they're talking about and sit down and compare notes. I would really love to do that because I mean, I'm, they're doing it from mathematical theory, and some of the stuff is tracing out. I'm coming from the you know, using my senses and what we've actually done from the opposite side, I want to see what that link up is. Well, yeah. I'm guessing that I'm digressing. Not now, but because our view inch is about 800 for the, first, for the last few months. But at some point, maybe there'll be a physicist watching this. If you're interested, let me know. I know how to recharge it. I will pay you real money. I mean, I'm talking about like a few thousand dollars. I'm serious. I have money. I mean, that's the whole thing. He does. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, he was on his person. That is a nice watch. I, we, my girlfriend here and I, we just gave each other his and her smartwatches because we could. <laughs> if you, it's like anything else. There are a lot of ultra powerful magicians that live in their parents' basement. Yeah. I do not. I have my own house. I have a very nice car. I'm not trying to brag, but it, if you, it's not about materialism, but let's face it. If a person's constantly sick or they're constantly broke or anything else like that, how powerful can they be? Versus someone who generally gets what they want doesn't mean they have to be an asshole about it, but you know, they're they're comfortable. Things are good, and they've been doing that way for decades. Unless poverty is the goal. Unless poverty is the goal, yeah. which is not mine. Like no, the drama. If yes. you're a Christian magician, 
Oh wait, I'm poor. Well, yeah, Jesus wasn't exactly a rich guy. <laughs> he was not supposed to exist. Yeah. Yes. It's like banned. Well, I don't think he doesn't. If you, but they, there are a lot. There are a lot of Christian magicians. Yeah, I mean, the apostles are that they were magicians. A lot of people say yourself. A lot of people say that if you read the Bible enough, there's a lot of it's a it's a spell book. I mean, think about we uh, like when they went around that one city seven times and dropped the walls like, duh, 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 seven times and send the on the What do you think that was? <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about that for a half second. You know, yeah, sure. there's yeah. lots of examples. Oh yeah, no, not to mention you thing. you have Saint Peter striking people down with right. spells. Yeah, or um. Pope Honorarius and the oh, oh, Pope Honorarius <laughs> the, and, and the, the, you know the fact that the Black Mass as we think of it with the inverted crosses started as a Catholic thing Catholic priests did to cast love spells wow that's nice I like that one I haven't heard that. Okay. not to mention <laughs> just for the viewers Pope Honor Honoris or Honorarius we've talked about which before, variation. we will again <laughs> Summoned demons to vanquish them because there were not enough threats on Earth. Regular evil wasn't good enough for him, so he summoned up demons to have greater temptation. <sighs> uh, and unfortunately, the world is not uh, short of idiot magicians. Don't get me wrong. Um, now, I will say that as a teacher, is like anything else. As if you're a karate teacher, you have the same kind of thing. I don't accept money for my students. I don't. That's not how things work. If you, if you get paid for something, then you're limited by, well, I have to have more students to get paid because I have to make a living. If you're not paid, you're not worried about that kind of thing corrupting things. Um, but, I mean, you think of a karate teacher who didn't, doesn't get paid, and he selects his students, etc. And he must choose no when a person's ready to go to that next level. And then as a teacher, you have to make sure that you understand that you can't just be making loose cannons. And yeah. you're responsible for the loose cannons you do make. And handle it. It's a girl yeah, yeah and it's a real problem. And you, I'm not a magician. I don't do magic and, in the same way as I do, but I have that, that problem too. I mean, you've come across yeah. most of them. Your, your, your friend, the father, yeah. the exorcist. He most time he comes across magicians is after they blow themselves up. Yeah, these are not examples. Good examples of made sane magicians. I'm sorry, it just yeah. isn't. So, kind of a follow up, a little yes. bit of a digression. To what end do you perform magic? What is your goal? I have lots of goals. It's not a singular goal. I mean, the obvious goal, yeah, you can more powerful, that's easy. Well, it's a matter of, I'm a very curious person. I want to know how the universe works. Way back in the day, I wanted to get into physics. I know how to make lasers and how to make them work and so forth. Like, cool. Believe it or not. Oh, oh, yeah, they're cool. But in any case, physics interests me greatly. The big problem with a lot of magicians is they try to pigeonhole modern magic into what physics already knows. It doesn't work. Yeah, coming from the opposite direction. So I do it as much to understand how the universe actually works, and which gets very screwed up as you might well imagine. Yeah, and I, yeah, I could be here for hours and that's still good. Um, but I've been doing this for like yeah, almost twenty five years, twenty four years now. Um, so my goal is taking what I know, imparting what I know, and then you have another mind working on the same problem. And then we teach more people. There's more minds working on the same problems. And, you know, but they have different goals individually. So usually it's a matter of making your life better without hurting someone else in the process. Yeah. Hmm. So Not that far from the Wiccan's Code. Yeah, no. Do as you will, but hurt none? Well, that's not that the Wiccan's Code, per se. That's that, a that's concept so. in most religions of America. Well, and they're the ones who do it without will was yeah. proudly. You know. Let's, let's we're, we're, we will we'll get into... Yes. That's the we That's the That is coming up. Yes. Uh, that that, that one I have studied, the history of Wicca is definitely one, and yeah. Crowley's relation to it is hilarious. Our next three episodes, when we don't have guests, we're going to have a whole bunch of guests, because we're here at Wicked Fair, and we've got some really awesome interviews lined up for you folks. But the next one, when it's just Drew and I, is Black Magic specifically. Okay, that's really true. Then it's going to be Neo-Paganism. And then it, or no, excuse me, black magic, neo paganism, and then Satanism. Okay. And we're going to get into the actual history of Wicca. <sighs> and probably annoy a lot of people. And I, I if neo paganism takes two episodes, I'm not going to be surprised. That's, yeah. it's, it's a grab bag. I mean, explaining Wicca. Well, it's not just Wicca here. Yeah, but no, no, no. no. Ossetron is now an official, has oh been an official um, yeah. of 
Iceland, and now they're actually finally building the temple. I mean, officially. It is. Um, but no, the with the Wicca, though, just, al- just them alone, I have researched them. I have written a 30-page paper on them. I still can't define what their beliefs are. All right, well, the problem is they keep there's, it there's too many. It's not about Alexander and the Ordinary and the Ordinary and the Ordinary and the Ordinary and the Ordinary. It's not a it's a bad thing. And then you have crickets. It, it's going to take a while to cover. And you still yeah. won't cover it. And I still won't no. cover it all. I will hardly scratch the surface, and that's what I'm trying to allude to. Yes. Perfect. So back to your original point. That you got, mentioned about and it's, a good, it's good yeah. expansion. Good banter. Right, right, good banter. Right. Good banter. <laughs> um, you were asking about divination. Yes. Okay. Can you repeat the question to me? So that I don't remember. It is mostly how does divination <laughs> factor into magic? Because there is it divination will, society. All right, there's but, all right. There's how Omnimancy handles it and how it's typically handled. Most of the time, uh, divination might be handled through tarot, through runes, or through many actually other different yeah. means. And people traditionally in magical systems would use it to go, okay, should I do X, should I do Y, should I even do this spell, or should I do the spell a certain way? That's traditionally how it's used. Uh, now, on the Mancy, because most of the magical systems, they, they, because it's ritual, they go, you know, to, you know, make the recipe, you make, make meat and you know, you're doing X, Y, you're adding some chemicals, and blah, blah, blah. On the Mancy, we drastically rely on the magical senses. We have to be able to see things. From the first time you walk in the door, we teach you how to see magic and actually sense it and actually use it. That's not to break it down and understand it. Much like you have your flask there. We, if that was just a magical object, we could sit there and go, maybe it was just the it's astral. Like, we would see the one piece here and go, aha, that goes there, and there's things inside it, and all the rest of that stuff. And that's what we teach the person to figure out how to do. It's not magic? Well, I can make magic if you want to. But that's what's up. Um, and so for Omnivance, we would very heavily rely on our sense. Extremely so, because that's how do you take apart an engine if you can't see what the hell you're doing? You know, it might be an amusing game, but practicality doesn't help you, let alone how to tweak it. All right, and that's the difference. So, one thing to consider that divination to a certain degree, because of like, for example, if you had a spell on you, I can see not only what it's actually doing, where it actually came from, trace it back to that individual, etc. Whereas most people go, well, I gotta do a divination, I gotta turn that, and stuff like that. And that's a different way of doing it. So which is, is it really divination or not? Um, now we do have like future tradition kind of divination, which is more traditional. Kind of thing. Uh, have we, do we do tarot sometimes? Uh, we have a thing referred to as life bath magic, which allows us to see a person's life before them, mm-hmm. if you will, whether it be our own or somebody else's, and see what choices they can make and what the actual end result is. Sometimes the short-term gain isn't the long-term gain. We see both parts of that. And what's interesting is you watch it live, and then as you tell someone you know, what's going to happen, you can see it alter in front of you. Hmm. So sometimes it can be useful to sit there and go, okay, if I decide to do this, what will be the end result? Oh, uh, okay, now I'm going to Or I decide to do this, what will be the end result? Okay, short term is going to suck, longer term is going to be better, that's the choice I'm making. And so it's okay. a different way of doing it. Oh. So there, now we're talking about divination, and actually, I have a good point or a good thing Question. to add to this. Yes. Question, comment, etc. So. Well, one of the things you can do is there is definitely like pendulums and tarot cards. I and start with pendulums, bad and things. Things like that that tend to, at least in my mind, lead toward, more towards the psychic and the mm-hmm. personal. But they're definitely scrying. Necromancy in the sense of you summon up a spirit of the dead to get it to predict the future for you. I mean... Or other types of spirits. The concept of runes is to have the gods place them in front of you. And that's true a lot with tarot, actually. I mean, not the gods precisely, but I mean, some people say, okay, I have my ancestors, could they please guide the cards or something else like that. You know, um, I personally cheat with the tarot, I possess the tarot deck, and then that's how I use it. 
Uh, does it really give you real answers then? Huh? If, I mean, if you're choosing which cards you pick, I mean... Well, I, I don't... You know, <laughs> I, I, as a person, I don't, I don't know it, but as a magical being, that's already been taken care of. What was interesting was, a friend of mine, a couple, they bought a brand new tarot deck, they wanted to get into this kind of stuff. They had a brand new tech out, out, out of the out of the plastic, and they were very slippery, all of them. They went, all right, this is not how you do tarot. you got to, like, put yourself into the tarot. And I showed them how to do it, and all of a sudden the cards were all staticky, and it's sort of like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, and so I was like, ah, see the difference now? You know. All right, so I have one that leads into next week's topic. Um, specifically, Mostly because I remember you have a very good story of this. Oh, now, <laughs> certainly, I'm not going to say, and none of us are going to say, that magic makes you an evil person. I mean, you and I have been friends for a while now. I don't think you're a terrible person because you're a magician of, and I'm a Christian. But, and I'm the, as you yourself referenced, I'm you know, reference. I, 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 don't, I don't think you're womanly because you use magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's C4. But. The thing is, well, as you <laughs> referenced earlier, certainly... He's laughing because he knows what I'm talking about. Magicians <laughs> do muck things up. Alright, you're... you're, you're, you're I think you remember a story with a fire. Kevin, this is what kind of look at you yeah. in trouble. You're yeah. saying, magicians has a tendency okay. of mucking things up. You're, you're loving everybody some, in some, there. Okay. And that's why everybody thinks you're, you're going against them. Because yeah. you're, you're, and you're I, ahead. Yeah. I know you well enough you're yeah. not. But the way you stated it out, you just but, yeah. literally just said all magicians just muck but, shit up, and that's and you got you that's got wrong. You, that's that's wrong. Wrong. you should say some magicians or some magicians don't know what they're doing muck shit up, and that's hundred percent correct. And I've cleaned up a lot of messes over the years. From that. Yeah, you're hundred percent correct. Yeah. Your your friend and the father has also yeah. cleaned up a lot of those messes. Yeah. But most magicians, unfortunately, self nerf. They start yeah. to believe their own crap too well, and they have no way of rounding out, and they yeah. self nerf in their own little downward spiral, and that's it. Some try to boil far where they can chew, and I, they, think, they, I would assume like everyone yeah. else magicians may not to summon, summon a greater demon at stage one. Some people try it. I, I know some people I try it. Um, I have a good story of someone who, I kid you not, decided like. I don't want to believe in magic, I don't believe in magic, so I'm going to go in the graveyard and I'm going to summon the biggest, baddest demon I can, and he did so. And what was funny was, he had it in the circle, and then he saw the shadow outside the circle, so he ran. Well, that was an illusion that the demon did, so that he would run, he broke the circle, so now it was a little release, and followed him home, and proceeded to fuck up his life something fierce. I'm not going to say who, I'm the next person. <laughs> but but that's the point. That's an example of a fuck up. Yeah. That's someone who's untrained. It's not any different than you giving yeah. your ten year old the keys to your car and go have fun and play like Mario Kart. That horrible thing. Okay. Yeah. It, it's like magic is like any other yeah. tool. It is by and whoever uses it. If you are yeah. untrained, you're going to fuck yourself up. Just like if you gave a ten year old, you know, okay. uh, a five year old max. So to go, yeah. what I was saying. Yes, I mean some magicians. I think yeah, that's a big thing. You really have to I watch your words say, sometimes. Yeah. I don't mean all magicians. I assume all magicians make mistakes because everyone else does. They but, do, but doesn't mean they're grand fuck ups. No, and I don't necessarily mean grand fuck ups. But I seem to recall you telling me a story once about somebody setting their house on fire. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, and they're proud of it. They're proud of it. Okay, I feel like this should be its own kind of like extra episode. <laughs> so, we'll get back to this. <laughs> It wasn't an on the answer. Uh, <laughs> it was someone in the AA, evidently. Like, you know, what that is. Um, but, yeah. That, that's, that's okay, that's. so, for consistency's sake, I have to be the skeptic. Sure, by all means. Because that is, that is entirely I have, my role. I have told every student, do not believe me. You're there to prove it for yourself. I could be a charlatan. I'd be making up shit. Any, all of this stuff. It's been my job to give you the tools to be able to prove it for yourself. And then they have what I refer to as the... I, I, how, how graphic can I go? The oh bleep moment. Well, you can go ahead and say it. <laughs> go for it. It's the oh bleep moment bad. if we need to. It, it, it's basically <laughs> the moment where you realize, like, holy sh... This is stuff is real. I remember I was at Rutgers, and I was giving a lecture there. It was a workshop. And I think my, my proudest moment was some guy, like, middle thing, we were just doing something simple with any balls. Yeah. And evidently the guy felt it. Because that's the whole point. 
and he went, holy shit, this stuff is real, and ran from the room. I went, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. so, and so that was a fun part. For, yeah, I've had those moments too in investigation. For our skeptic audience, right? which, let's be honest, I'm not sure how many there are. And there should be skepticism. There skepticism should be. is good. Skepticism but, keeps you grounded. It keeps you moving delusional, and then it's, it's far too easy to imagine become delusional. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing with you in the slightest, but is there any kind of proof? That's Here, my question. Okay. I have to be an asshole. Well, no, no, you, you should be. And I don't find I'm not offended by it at all. Proof is defined on many levels. Proof can be defined as if I hand you something and you feel it, doesn't mean Jack the person is watching. Yes. You know, I could have paid you, or you could have just been along on the trip, or any number of different things. It doesn't prove anything, all right? The other problem is, uh, I mean, I've, I've done that kind of stuff before. It's like, why can't you prove the magic? It's like, okay, I spend all the effort, I prove you to, magic to you, I've got one person on the seven billion planet, I don't care, <laughs> all right? That's the reality. Um, until I can start, like, levitating and throwing fireballs and there's no other explanation, Please some people will never actually believe in magic. It's the plain simple end of it. Can you do that for our viewers? <laughs> you not know yet. That I, am trying. Trying. <laughs> I am trying, but not yet. Uh, we've had some weird stuff, but not repeatable. And that's part of the problem. Uh, the other issue is, if you said an experiment, uh, what my own experiments have shown, actually, and this was actually kind of interesting, is, um, is reality itself is finite unless it's operated by an outside force. The problem is, all of us as, as physical living beings are that outside force. If you don't know how to change it, then you're not really changing anything anyway. But, I did an experiment when I got to a certain power level, I could see the universe. If you will. But then I got to a certain point where I could also see these frames, like they look like a film strip, that look like the same universe. It's like, okay. Well, you always hear about the multiple universe theory, we think of yeah. like, you know, normal quantum physics, that kind of thing. I never really wanted to buy into it, but here it really was in front of me. He's like, okay, let's do an experiment. Let's zoom in and go, I'm going to make something very simple in the astral and have it just be a flashing ball. I'm going to make it two minutes into the future, okay? And so think of time as a spatial dimension. So if you look towards the camera or towards Kevin, let's do it towards Kevin. Hi. You know, <laughs> hi. Well, so Kevin is the future, I am the present, further towards the camera is the past, okay? So it's, it's a spatial, you know, so think of time as a spatial dimension. Yeah, it's yeah. simply wobbly time you want to use. Well, it gets better than that. So <laughs> if I make the, the flashing ball where his head is, that's two minutes in the future. So two interesting things really occurred. First point was, why wasn't it there already? Okay. I mean, if I'm making it to the future, why isn't it there already? As soon as I make the spell, there's this ripple effect that goes out, and then I see on both sides of you know on the film strip the ball. And it's further away in one spot and closer in another and on the other side. And I'm going, huh. And as time went on, the ball moved closer and it moved in the current time and then it was moving in the past. And it's sort of like, okay, well this proved two things. One looking at is time, not multiple universes. Because if it was multiple universes, that wave should only go in one direction. Meaning, as soon as you made it, then it should have split where you had it and didn't have it. You know, it should. I mean, so that change should have changed from that point. Versus it going out in both directions. What that showed was the universe now had just re-altered itself to say that it was always there. And that's the biggest problem with magic: is that you go up to you know, any magician with their stall can make their paycheck arrive like a couple days early, for, as an example. Or change the weather. Well, we all know that, you know, for realistically mundane reasons to happen, okay, you, you cast it 20 seconds before you get to the door, you open the door, and there's a check. Okay, it's a Wednesday, it's not a Friday. Okay. Well, if you went back and you said, okay, why did this physically manifest that way? It didn't just go pop and there it was. You went back and there was some sort of computer glitch or someone's holiday or someone's going on the vacation and all the rest of the stuff that had to go back in time to make all these weird series of coincidences happen and what we call synchronicity. Well, as a magician, the whole point is to cause these synchronicities. But the problem is that when you go back and, and then you go back and you track this out, well, this was a weird series of coincidences. Well, here's the problem. In that one instance, okay, you explain all this coincidence, but then you have to use metadata, meaning when they're trying to redo all these different uh, uh, 
tested it different in the 70s and 80s, all different things. They found out that the experiment itself is a variable. If they change out the person who's a skeptic, yeah. the, the experiment doesn't work. And for the person who is not a skeptic, who actually believes in this stuff, the experiment works. And they go, okay, that should not work that way. But, but it, it does. does. And that's been also proven now scientifically. Now, this doesn't help you make fireballs, but it shows that something weird is going on. Well, but there is a scientific explanation for that one, which is basically the experimenter who's expecting to see it sees it because of expectancy effect. But it they goes on that, that. Which I'm, it goes I'm beyond not, that, though. I'm not arguing that, I'm just simply because having other, you to get state a third, the other you side. You get a third person in there that, that, that just looks at the data, and the data is simply different depending on who ran it. And there's nothing to get anything different. But that's, that is consistent with experimentation. Yes. I mean, Anytime you switch out your experimenter, you switch out your data. And there will be variations based off the way they conducted their experiment. But Drew, what, what's interesting that Arthur's getting at, and I, I'm a little familiar with this, is uh, they've stu done, 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 done studies that have shown that, no, 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 objectively the data changes based on the viewer. I'm, You're right, observer bias accounts yeah, no, for a I, lot I, of I, it. But there's but a, not enough of it to... There's some of it that doesn't, the that isn't there, explainable by observer bias. I, I'm not necessarily trying to argue yeah. as much as I'm trying to provide the other side. No, no, no and I agree Which with is, you. Then, yeah, that is a lot of... problem I is, to until that, what they're yeah. referring to, no, like, and magic is easy to do, no one is going to sit there and go, oh, this is provable. The problem is, is that, okay, if I change the weather, what difference does it make? Okay, for me it was convenient. I have to worry about it. My son does this stuff all the time. It's ridiculous. I get up to the school, it's freaking raining, open the door, and the rain stops. You get inside, the rain starts again. He does this shit every goddamn time. Okay? So get some guy to follow me around and watch this shit. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's my opinion on it. But I mean, to sit here and do this right now in front of you, the camera, well, yeah, I can have as many animals as you want. Unless you can be inside of the room. That might that actually suck. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll sell the sprinklers. How's that? <laughs> Um, but that's the point, though. For yeah, someone who is on the other end of this video, there's nothing I can do to show it to you. Because right now, it's a video. Yeah. And even I convince you, it's not convinced that. And even if you and I have as many anecdotes, I could be here all day and give you anecdotes. Doesn't mean anything. Why should... How do you know I'm not lying? By the way, if you can produce yeah. the fireball, you convince all of us, but it could be a special show one effect. Exp it was someone there. Oh, ooh, cool, you did that in front in, in, It's a really in front awesome mirror. special effect. Yeah. Okay, let's but be that's honest. The problem. From my perspective, if they met, if they happen to do a fireball, I will be honest with you. I am not going to say it's post production. It we will be a fireball if it is. If you manage to get to the point you can throw the fireballs on a snow, we'll set up. A Meanwhile, it take up for example, see what people think. Our EVP episode. Was there an EVP? I'd say no. This is my job. My I'd job still, is to be the skeptic. I'm the so, believer. I'd still say no. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm. I'm not gonna lie to you. You have no proof that I'm not gonna lie to you. But I'm gonna tell you that anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like anything else. Um, you have to look at what are the probabilities of something happening. One instance is not a provable thing. Two instances is not a provable thing. But how do you get a 10, 30, 50? And you got, okay, something weird is going on here. My explanation, I mean, someone once told me, Arthur, even if you can make a fireball and put it right in front of your hand, and you said it was magic, it's not proved that it's actually magic. We just don't have a science to say what it is. Doesn't mean that what you're saying is correct. And that's the reality. Until that bridge science exists, even if I made the fireball, it's not proved. But can you make it? I have not been able to make the fireball. I've been able to do some really screwed up stuff. For example, I just went, there was a ring that somebody had, and they thought it was cursed or something like that, so I went, I'll remove all energy from it. The damn thing got so damn cold, water started to condense on it. Now, have you ever held anything metal in your hand, the metal actually warms up to your hand, and then the things got so freaking cold, I was passing around the like five or six, and people go, look how freaking cold this damn thing is, because it was just, like, I was just in the to, see, to be there I, I, the Yeah, no, I, it was I, cool. I was. I was like, I can't do that again. I was really you hoping know. I had a ring, be like, yeah. <laughs> but I, I got okay. And so watch and it's plastic and that's not gonna and work. It, it was it was completely accidental. I Maybe it will freeze the, the alcohol, but then the alcohol. Do you know how cold it is when freeze alcohol? <laughs> that's and really and cold. People have done like random TK. This is not alcohol. Like but I mean <laughs> people are more impressed by like, okay, you know, I'm buying a house and I really need three thousand dollars because all the weird weird like costs that they don't tell you about last second. So what happens? Check shows up in the, in the mail for the, the amount that I need. I'm going, okay, this is cool and all, but where the hell does this actually come from? Well, because I'm a, I'm a programmer for a living, 
Um, in New Jersey, at least at the time, um, programmers weren't considered professionals. If you're a doctor or a lawyer and you work mm -hmm. overtime, you don't get time and a half. Well, in Jersey, you do get time and a half if you're a programmer. And so some guys sued them. So the IRS went in there, went through all their books, and anyone who worked overtime, they cut a check for it. And all that sorts of things showed up. That is glorious. And that's just another example oh. of stupid. And, 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 okay, but that's not proof. It's an anecdote. That's still not proof of we're anything. We're, we're, that's no, the kind of stuff why I do. I will say, really is we're not going to prove anything to anyone doing this show. The point is to present possibilities and things for people to give thought to. And my job is to challenge it, and not because good. I'm going to be, not because I want to be a dick, but because I have to You're be a dick. You're not a dick. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're not a I dick. Trying to explain I this admire you more for being the nah. skeptic because you should be a skeptic. There's so many people that I can sit there and say, "Little green man" or behind the thing, and that's what they call it. And they go, "Little green man," and they'll believe it. And I'm calling you morons. You know, that's what drives me up the wall. They said people don't try to prove their stuff out. There's no mole people in the center of the earth. No. Doesn't work. Damn. There we will get there to that. The there are mountains near the Himalayas. No, 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 no. There used to be under the earth. The earth is hollow. <laughs> there are more people living in there. <laughs> presidents have believed. Okay, one president has believed this. That's probably no, true. But there's it's true. The it's true. It's true. It's true. He's a crazy historian person. He, yeah, no, he, he would know. A term. <laughs> it might have Madison. We'll get into this later. We'll do a ridiculous Founding Fathers episode, and it will be glorious. We're going to branch out, by the way, folks out there. We're going to start doing some stuff on your history, maybe some Let's Plays, some Creepypastas. So, because, because we can. It's our channel. We can do whatever the heck we want with it. You let's play with what? what? Um, Fatal Frame, maybe. We haven't figured it out yet. Okay, fair enough. Just curious. We'll figure something out. There's, there's some so, paranormal-themed video games out yes, there. I'm playing with this, yeah. Um... And it's curious, you should see, we did an uh, uh, interview with a guy by the name of Lupus Creepus. Okay. Does Let's Plays and does Let's Take This Creepy Creepy Pasta and Try It on Camera. Oh, God. <laughs> it's wonderful. He hasn't gotten results yet, but it is so much fun to watch. It was wonderful. I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. I'm not the minority by being a skeptic. <laughs> Nice guy, but and I like it. He's skept very skeptical about it. It's like, okay, this is the ritual creepy pasta. This is what it says to do. We're going to follow it as exactly as possible with the proviso we're, we're filming it. And let's see what happens. He, he got a bit of creepy results when he did the one man hide and seek. Okay. But nothing overtly paranormal. He may or may not be doing an episode on Vic Victorian spells. spells because I recommend him a book. Yeah. Well, all right. Here's the problem. <laughs> Magic in the end, the one of the core points is belief. Yeah. You don't believe. I mean, think about the whole world. Any. Uh, by the way, the camera fell. Uh, Oops. Bump, sorry. Bump, well, I when I came over here, wow. stop. So hold on a second. Thank you. Let me restart this. Holy shit! When did that time happen? Right. It's like almost ten o'clock. Sorry, man. We should wrap this up. We've been yeah. going about 46 minutes, by the way. No, no. I, I, yeah, 46 minutes and 76 minutes. Yeah, so if you guys want to... We should back up right. on both I do want you to do the, the fire story because it's funny and it's worth it. I'm thinking it's we, short, we should wrap it up enough. and then we should do it. It's so because enough. we want short episodes and I've been thinking about this the entire time. There's not much we need to... It's not much Yeah. Uh, so I think we should do that as two parts. Or you, story do, it as, or you do it as an extra. That's what I'm saying. Okay. The, the Thank you.